this time I'm going to bring up uh, Seth and Brittany Beck. Um, they're going to come this morning to be baptized. Um, a baptism is an ordinance that's been passed down. Come on up, guys. Has been passed down uh, from our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, commissioning his church to go into all the world, baptizing uh, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, uh, teaching them to observe all that the Lord has commanded. Uh, now, baptism is a symbol uh, that the one has repented of their sins and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 4 says this of Christians, that we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Uh, Seth and Brittany have come today to be baptized, uh, to publicly identify with Christ's death and his resurrection, uh, to be raised, to walk in, a, in the newness of life. Uh, but before we uh, baptize them, we're going to baptize them after this morning's sermon, uh, I'm just going to have them come up and share their story of how they come uh, to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Seth, why don't you go first, brother? great today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, my name is Seth Beck. Um, I was born in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, I have four brothers, and we all wrestled in high school, and uh, we're very, very competitive uh, when, we grew, when we grew up. And uh, with going through high school wrestling, we, we found a little success in the sport. Uh, we, we were all state champions. And in that, uh, I think Along the way, we just kind of, or I, at least I handled it wrong. Um, I kind of brought, uh, tried to seek glory for myself and got a little prideful. And uh, pretty much I became prideful in whatever I did, uh, even throughout the day. Um, and sometimes my, my thought processes were, it was so asinine that I would think of myself not needing to talk to people, but rather they would have to be the ones to talk to me. So it's kind of like looking down upon people, I guess. Um, So I started dating a girl named Brittany my junior year in high school. And things were pretty good uh, at first. And then, you know, drama started setting in. And uh, we just had a terrible relationship. Um, We pretty much argued every day and and we pretty much stayed together off of motives of bad intent, if you know what I mean. But uh, in December of my senior year in high school, I found out that I was going to be a father. And for some reason, I began to only think of my lost future wrestling career in college or how I was stuck at home. And I was so angry at Brittany about that that I pretty much abused her in uh, – my words. I even tried to convince her to exploring a different option than having our son. And uh, we eventually ended up breaking our relationship off around mid-December. And I never wanted to get back together with her again. Um, So yeah, and that's how our relationship ended at that point. But about three months later, I went to a youth conference with my brothers And on that trip, I listened more deeply to the message there, and I felt strongly convicted about the whole situation and my past. And uh, maybe it was the fact that I was about to become a father, and I just wanted him to trust me, that I I knew what was best for him, and he would trust me and just obey what I said. And I think that pretty much goes in a good relationship with our father. Who's in heaven. Um, and I believe the pastor at that youth conference was saying that we can become a different person in Christ and leave our old person behind, which is pretty much uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, which it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And I prayed that today that I, I can do that and that accept Christ in my life, and he saved me. And uh, after that trip, I began to seek uh, new way, newer ways to serve. I joined the church I was going to and made a commitment with God to change who I was. And a year later, I was associated with leading a Royal Rangers program, 
which is pretty much Boy Scouts to an extent. And, uh, and we went to a camp out with a group of our kids from the church. And I began to socialize with the other commanders there about their situations. And, uh, and I felt something was missing. The theme of the camp out was unity. And I felt united with my kids from the group, but I was missing something else that was very important, which was my own family who I had uh, tortured through my words in the past. And I prayed at the camp out and felt like I was called to give Brittany patience in trying to reunite together. And with that being said, I was married to my wife, Brittany, on August 16th of this year. Um, and I'm thankful that God gave Brittany strength to never listen to me when I was at <clears throat> allergies. <clears throat> I'm just thankful that God gave her the strength to never listen to me when I was uh, trying to convince her otherwise. And I'm thankful that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and uh, the second chance I've been given. Galatians 2.20 says, For through the law I died to the law, so that I might live to God. And I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And I'm so glad our Lord has had patience in me. And for my family and friends who have encouraged me to keep my relationship with Christ. And I'm thankful for Park as well for helping, me, for helping my family and me grow in him. And I just pray that anyone who doesn't know Jesus, I pray that they will um, today. Because it's the best experience that I've ever had. So thank you. I'm going to get off of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, and I'll leave these words with you. In Christ's name. All right. My name's Brittany Beck. I'm an only child, and I grew up in Rock Hill also. I was a dancer in the band. And that's pretty much what I spent all my time doing. I put dance above my family relationship and above friends. I was prideful because I thought I was best at what I did, too. Um, I didn't think that I needed to be outgoing. I met Seth my junior year of high school in chemistry class, and we started dating. Our relationship was good at first, but then it got bad. <clears throat> After a few months of being together, we were no longer together for the right reasons. And in December of my senior year, I found out I was going to be a mom. It wasn't easy to come to the realization that I was... I was going to go through a pregnancy. I'm going to help Brittany finish reading her, her testimony. Um, it wasn't easy to come to the realization that I was going to go through a pregnancy alone. It was harder to realize I couldn't dance anymore. I was more concerned with not being able to attend college outside of Rock Hill and not being able to dance anymore. I was tempted by many people around me to consider alternative measures so I could stick with my plans I had already made for my life. It was hard to stay strong, but I thank God every time I look at Caden, but I did stay strong. At that time in my life, I had no idea what I was going to do or how I was going to make it alone. I realized now God was with me every step of the way during my pregnancy. After having Caden, I was verbally abusive to Seth. I had anger in my heart towards him and said many things I shouldn't have said to him. I didn't spend as much time with my family after having Caden. I wanted to raise him on my own. I thought I could do everything on my own. I didn't realize how wrong I was until Seth and I began to speak after a few months of silence. I knew something in him was different, and I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to know what it was that could make him so happy. Seth introduced me to his newly found faith. I attended his church, but not every Sunday. 
After a couple months of going, I realized I was missing the love of my life. I knew I needed Jesus more than anything in this life, but I was afraid he wouldn't want me. I believed this until I read Romans 8, 38 through 39, which say this, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither things present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Knowing that my sin was not too great for God to forgive, I was saved. And now live for my, my life for my Savior and not for myself. I married my best friend on August 16th, 2014, because Christ has taught us how to forgive and how to love. I am thankful he brought Seth into my life and used me, used him to get to me. I just want to close with a verse that has been close to my heart since I began to walk with Christ, and that is John 15:5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Uh, well, as you've heard their testimony, um, what I'm going to say here, guys, I'm going to ask them several questions uh, to publicly um, uh, share uh, their faith with, with, with us. Um, do you make profession uh, of repentance towards God and our, of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his ways? Do you intend, with God's help, to obey Jesus' teachings and to follow him as Lord in the fellowship of the church? Uh, can I ask the members of Park Baptist Church to please stand? Um, I'm going to ask you. This is a communal affair. They're publicly standing before uh, you saying they're committed to follow Jesus. And I'm going to ask you to publicly declare that you are going to be faithful to them as they walk with Jesus. Uh, so, beloved, uh, do you commit to help Seth and Brittany continue in their walks as a Christian in connection to this church? Well, amen. Well, you guys grab a seat. Um, I'm going to pray for them in a moment.